Welcome back. You're listening to the panel discussion network modernization for federal agencies sponsored by Siena Government Solutions and Comcast Government Services on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guests today are Jeff Fowler, the Chief Information Officer at the Bureau of Intelligence and Research at the Department of State, Rodney Alto, the Director of Global Infrastructure Office at the CIA, Andy Gomer, a highly qualified expert focused on transport with the Defense Information Systems Agency, Jim Westorp, the Chief Technologist at Siena Government Solutions, and Colin Gosnell, the Head of Solutions Engineering at Comcast Government Services. Now, before break, we were talking about the pandemic and the effect it's had on the network. And in many ways, the pandemic has opened the door for, for all of us to really rethink, okay, well, what's the future need to look like? What's the, what's the modernization or what's the long-term roadmap look like? Let me start with Rodney from the CIA. Again, as we talked about earlier, you guys have been on a, a really long time journey for, you know, I, I said five or seven years, you, you went all the way back to 9-11, so that's where you're know, pushing 20 years now. But give me a sense of where you're heading now. What, what's, what's the next five to, to, to 10 years look like? Jason, thank you. And, and I'm gonna focus on three areas for future needs at, at CIA and our network. Uh, and the first one of those is, is automation. And, and I will go back to 9-11, and, and in response to 9-11, CIA grew its IT capacity rapidly, uh, and much of that growth was predicated on people doing certain functions. Today, we have to leverage new automation services to reduce our people footprint and accelerate our impact against mission with automated services that will, quite frankly, run 24-7 with both greater reliability and predictability. The future savings from automation will be the investment engine that allows us to reinvest into new IT capabilities that will position IT ahead of mission demand. The second topic for us in our focus area is, is AI. Today's modern networks and devices can generate terabytes of information daily on the health and security status of your network and your infrastructure. We need AI to analyze this data. We need it to drive operational efficiencies, anticipate the network and infrastructure failures, and highlight the needle in a haystack that could be that cyber challenge. And this all happens, has to happen in real time. And then finally from us, it's, it's really about 5G. And there's an immense level of commercial innovation being developed around the 5G ecosystem. And CIA will look to leverage 5G's enhanced edge computing capabilities, faster networks, and potentially private secure 5G cellular networks in support of our overall intelligence mission. Those are the three topics, areas for us as we look forward uh, and we're putting a lot of focus into them. I'm not sure anyone would disagree with those three kind of priorities. I hear that often. Uh, l let me bring in uh, uh, Andy from DISA as well. Andy, jump in. How does DISA looking at the future of the network? Well, first of all, I, I agree with Rodney. Um, I love working with the, that group as often as I can. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is of course 5G. We're putting 5G towers on a lot of these bases so we can support uh, that type of bandwidth on those uh, places we can't get to on those uh, runways, things like that, upgrading that speed and technology. Um, one of the other things we're doing is we're removing those old technologies. We're getting rid of the, the we have still have four or five, 6,000 circuits of, of TDM technology. That's all got to go. We've got to go to the one gig, the 10 gig, um, Comcast just won some great, um, uh, one of our regions for the new environment we're putting in called Commercial Ethernet Gateway. The circuit prices were phenomenal. It can save tens of, of millions of dollars a month on our circuit costs alone and give us, oh God, five, 10, 15 times the bandwidth we're used to. Um, the other thing I'd like to do with our network is as we move to what Jim's talking about, that new 400 gig and getting that higher speed, that higher bandwidth on our network, I'd like to share our network and work better with Rodney, things like that. He's got things I need. He goes to places I don't go to. He's got access to places I need, and I think I have places that he needs to get to. I want to share more of my fiber, more of my network with him, and vice versa. Same thing with Jeff. He goes to places I'm not at. I need to go to those places, and I think I have places that he needs to go to that I've got. We're making deals with also some of these commercial vendors to go overseas. We're actually looking at buying... Um, uh, pieces of fiber or access to fiber and big wavelengths to go overseas and to get to Australia, Japan, uh, Guam, things like that where we can get high speed bandwidth at much less the cost that we're paying now. So um, uh, that's the future of where we're going and I hope that, that, uh, that we could, you know, all, and plus cloud access, we have to get more bandwidth to the cloud. 
So it, it's going to be a great future, I think. And uh, because of the vendors we're working with, we're really going to, I think, make it. Colin, jump in here and, and, and offer a little, little quick feedback because I think what Andy and what Rodney have talked to, and I'm sure Jeff will, will jump in as well eventually. But Colin, start with the, the move to 5G, the, the more, more, more. I mean, that puts a lot of pressure on people like you. It does. 5G represents a new access technology into a network from an overall architecture standpoint. It's similar to coax and fiber. And we had 4G before, and 4G was certainly implemented as cellular backhaul for a lot of different services. What we see with 5G is it's that last segment within, within the architecture, and we still need that network infrastructure in the background that can handle that traffic that's coming in. So we see it as a further uh, acceleration of demand into the overall network architecture. So we welcome 5G to come into the network. We, we certainly are working with it on, on other sides with uh, cell towers. 5G is driving uh, the demand for cell towers all over the country uh, to expand exponentially. And we're enabling those cell tower connectivity back into the core infrastructure. So certainly we are in support of the 5G expansion throughout the country. To the same extent, we can enable agencies to take advantage of that 5G by integrating those private 5G connections that Rodney had discussed into the existing infrastructure that those agencies have in place within the overall uh, topology of their architecture. So it's about, from a carrier standpoint, it's about integrating the new technology into the existing architecture, rather than rip and replace and, and, and build new every time a new technology comes in. And that's a challenge that we deal with. And, and we have some great partners, and Sienna being one of our primary partners that enables us to bring in the different technologies as they come in and integrate that in a consolidated architecture to those in government clients. Jim, jump in as well, because I want to hear from your perspective. We heard from Colin, but now also from your perspective, as agencies are asking for more, as we are asking, as, as organizations want more, that, that puts a pressure on you, not just, the, not just Colin as the provider, but also Sienna as, as, as a partner. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we're responding in, in a couple of different ways. You know, we've talked about uh, capacity a lot. Uh, and one of the things we hadn't mentioned is uh, actually there's a there's a there's a capacity revolution going on not just on the terrestrial side you know between cities and towns in the U.S. and overseas but but also in the undersea cables that go between the continents and so a lot of the same technologies that are being applied to terrestrial networks are also being applied to the undersea network so we're seeing dramatic increases in capacities between continents and it helps it helps geographic diversity. Uh, you know, it helps being able to get to other data centers in, in larger locations. So there's there's a fair bit of that going on. Um, I would also say that uh, it, you know it's kind of counterintuitive because Andy talked about wanting to get you know get rid of a lot of the uh, low speed uh, TDM services, which absolutely are being evolved uh, out of the network. Um, even though we see less and less of the uh, you know Sonnet and SDH services in the metro and core of the network. Um, especially on the mission side, and we also see this, uh, you know, in, in a critical infrastructure and power and water networks as well. There still is, just because of the investment cycle, there's, you know, millions and millions of dollars of, of older equipment that's out there that we can't afford, well, you know, the end users and, and the enterprises can't afford to re wholesale replace. And this stuff speaks, Sonnet, SDH, um, low-speed interfaces. And so you can't afford to get rid of it all at once or, or even over the next five or 10 years, um, but you want it to use converged, you know, cost effective, high capacity infrastructure. And so you need a way to be able to, uh, to transition your network to still have the ability to speak some of those older protocols, but carry it over, uh, you know, cost efficient and effective uh, packet technologies. And that's, you know, that's one of the capabilities that, that uh, Sienna brings to the market as well. Um, and then I guess one, you know, one, one last thing, since we talked a little bit about uh, AI and, and, and some of the things that are going on in the network, uh, we've really tried to make the network itself into a form of a sensor. So in order to support the automation that we're all talking about, there's a tremendous amount of information that the network has about um, you know, the, the traffic that's flowing over it, where it's going, um, the the statistics of that traffic, what the health of the network and even the end, end uh, points is. And you can actually take this information and use it 
as part of you know artificial intelligence uh, engines and the various automation tools to really make your network you know, yes, dynamic, but a whole lot more reliable and even more secure than it has been in the past. And so that's, that's another thing, using the, the network as a sensor to, to be able to, to feed the AI engines and do a much better job of, of operating than it could in the past. And hey, that's Jason, you know, part of the future. Jason, this is Jeff. I wonder if I could just add in a, a little short quip, if I, if I might. And I've been thinking about my colleagues, both on the government side and private industry. And, and uh, frankly, government only works well when it works together. Uh, and, and that's just sort of the reality. I mean, Andy was talking a lot about uh, his capabilities and, and bandwidth and, uh, and whatnot, and he's right, I wanna use it. Uh, and need to, if I'm going to be effective in providing services sort of corporately, not just for the enterprise that is the Department of State, but ultimately for the American people, right? So we have to work effectively together. Same thing with Rodney. There is a symbiotic relationship between CIA and uh, the Department of State. Uh, and we rely very heavily uh, on our uh, colleagues in the commercial sector to enable our capabilities that we just don't have uh, the bandwidth in-house uh, to really be able to provide I don't want to repeat what my colleagues Rodney and Andy said, um, other than to say what they said, but also for the department, it's uh, secure, mobile, and distributed. Those are the things that we're thinking about as we look to the future. And I make the distinction between mobile and distributed uh, as an important one. And for me, distributed really goes to the issue of we can't any longer afford to uh, 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 do our business in sort of centralized locations. Those locations can be denied to us. Uh, COVID is doing that right now. So we need to be able to do our work, not just to change our business model, as I talked about before, but actually to be able to conduct the business of classified uh, intelligence analysis in the case of INR uh, and to do it in a distributed fashion. The key among all of this, and, and, and this has been a tremendous conversation and, and uh, the key to all of this is how to deliver services in a secure but effective way. And I think one thing that we just don't want to get lost in, in, in this conversation is the network underpins that ability. So Andy, maybe I'll just give you the last word here. As DISA kind of serves more and more customers as you push it out to the edge, how do you, quickly, how do you find that right balance between uh, security, mitigating risks, but also efficiencies, cost savings? How do you, how do you get all those balanced together? Well, um, thanks, Jason. The, the, the new technologies, zero trust is a great security and also a great way to do networking. Software-defined networking is, a, is built in securities that are better than what I even have. So these new technologies, I have to be able to move to them. I can only move to them if I upgrade my backbone, upgrade my network, and upgrade what I'm doing. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, all, all, it's a family thing that we have to do together. And as Jeff said, uh, Jeff, I'd love you to use my network. I would love for anybody to use my network. I want border protection on the backbone. I want to put FBI on the backbone. I want to put uh, DHS on the backbone. I mean, I have all this bandwidth. I'd love to have them use it at a very low cost. I mean, it, it, it's, it's great and secure. I have, I have security features in my backbone that I can discuss on this, on this line, of course, but it's built in and it's all, uh, all available to use. So I would love to have that uh, working in, uh, in that environment. And that's where the network needs to go. And I need the, uh, with Colin and Jim on my side, they just won some big bids with me. They're great. The, uh, the bandwidth is coming and the uh, cost is going down and things are going up. Uh, bandwidth is going up, reliability is going up and I, I, that's where I wanna be. All right, on that note, we're gonna have to say thank you to our panelists. This has been a fascinating conversation. You've been listening to the panel discussion, Network Modernization for Federal Agencies, sponsored by Siena Government Solutions and Comcast Government Services on Federal News Network. Let me thank my guests. Jeff Fowler is the CIO of the Bureau of Intelligence and Research at the Department of State. Rodney Alto is the Director of the Global Infrastructure Office at the CIA. Andy Gomer is a highly qualified expert focused on transport with the Defense Information Systems Agency. Jim Westorp is the Chief Technologist at Siena Government Solutions. And Colin Gosnell is the Head of Solution Engineering at Comcast Government Services. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time today. I'm Jason Miller. For more on this discussion, visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search Siena or Comcast.